Pirates. We're in the drafting headquarters once again with Winter Black and, of course, Draskal. Gentlemen, Wings game number two underway here. To pick. We really don't know to expect. Winter, what did you just say to me before we came back on here? There is no... There is no meta. There is no meta. I think it's fairly accurate at this point, right? Ten and people change, like, the, even the opening bands, uh, like, almost every single game. I mean, sure, we've seen uh, the drama taken out quite a bit. Remaining. Yeah, just look at Wings, what they're yeah. doing this game. <laughs> I mean, like, to correct it a bit, there's no meta for those Reserve two teams. Time. Like, I mean, every no, other there's team no has grand one. final meta. All right, yeah, there we good. go. So there's good. no meta for the two greatest teams in the game right now. Yeah, but, yeah okay. basically. But I think that just That's speaks, great. It speaks volumes about why Dota is in such a great spot right now. The meta is self-belief and confidence. That's the meta. The power of the heart. It's the meta. Yeah, we've seen the same with the Lions. Their meta was the meta. Wow. Very deep from Black. Thank you for that. <laughs> DC, Wait, your turn meta is anti-image invoker. Get the heck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> you can win any game with the AM first pick. I'm just saying. Yeah, in your dreams. We'll have to see if they heed your advice or not. For now, no, their first won't. picks will stay a bit more uh, traditional, if you will. Oracle right into a faceless void there for wings, while Ten DC seconds. for Remain. now snag up Marana and then look for the secondary grab. We'll anticipate wings possibly a... Gaming's turn oh, Naga. To We've seen maybe Shadow Demon, but no. no Naga Siren Naga. counter. I mean, counters the, the void. They have done it before. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I expected like a Shadow Demon 2, to be honest, because it's just so good with the Mirana, but instead they just want to wanna go for the Naga Siren to completely counter the void. Ten and seconds, if you get a net on the mid laner, you can still arrow him pretty I easily. Mean, both teams have their significant way Five of dealing with the remaining. void. We saw from Wings last game, they picked the Pudge. This time, DC, obviously, in a few games we saw, they like to Reserve go for the Naga time. against the Chronosphere to deal with it. Be it a support, be it a core. And they get opposite reactions from their spectators. Pudge, hype, Naga. <laughs> I mean, to be fair though, it's it's such a solid opening for Wings as well because you have the the Oracle already against the Marana. That that hero can pretty much protect two uh, two different people on this team from the burst of the Marana once the Aghanims is out. You know, you fade to X1 and oh then my you just God. on the other. The game yesterday, you just yeah. reminded me That's of. That's why I'm saying it's like so good. Yeah, it's a hard counter, like literally a hard counter. Like the only thing you do with the Marana is you blink next to people in your starfall, and then he's like, <laughs> he's like what? Fates Edict. Fates Edict. I know you don't know the name of that spell. Yeah, he just said it. Of course I know. <laughs> <laughs> fair. And Dude, to be fair, it took me like a year to learn what those things were called. I don't know why it was so hard for me to remember them, but... Purifying flames, dude. Yeah, that's his E. Do you know his Q? Let's go. Fortunes and... DC's I didn't ask you. I know you know. I was testing the cores, but it's all right. I am. Yeah, so for Wings in the second band phase, Wings they choose to pick out the tight, to band. the tight, a very good hero to deal with Chronosphere if you don't catch him in. It's very difficult for your teammates to run in. It's like, it works both ways. You, you want to Chrono the tight, but if you don't the tide, the tide will be able to blink behind the bubble and just ravage your teammates. Yeah. And on top of that, it's like super good with Naga Siren. That's like Ten TI3, TI2 remaining. meta. Naga Sleep into Ravage. It's, it's still very, very strong and Five people don't want to deal with it. Do, do, do you think like Disruptor is probably better in that sense where the setup is much easier than the tide Ravage? No, Disruptor is time. like way easier and like the cooldown is way shorter as well. Yeah. Yeah. But it also could be scared that they don't have a mech carrier as well, whereas this weapon doesn't really fit into that slot. Yeah, and that's that's a really good point about like tide. Not many of uh, off that's right now that offers that being the mech carrier in the current meta. Only Tide and Darkseer does that. Yep. Darkseer is actually a possibility for Wings too, right? I mean, now that we bring it up, because they have the Oracle themselves. Yeah. Super good with the um, Void as well. You can Chrono. I mean, you can like make people into the Chrono. DC's you Iron Shell the Void. You make them like, super strong early on. Yeah, but, but the issue is like, it's not one of Moose's comfortable heroes. He, he plays best on Timber or Batrider. No, no, we said for Wings, right? Oh. Yeah, for Wings, not, yeah, for, for, not for DC. Okay. Wings uh, Gaming. DC you definitely want the the bad rider there the timber saw his best heroes for sure like by far as well. Oh. They'd also got rid of the uh, huskar of course on the side of DC. Yeah. And Oracle comes out. You got to make sure all bases are covered Ten in the second. Yeah, the second phase, uh, second phase rather, is really where you hit the other team with those respect bands and then Five obviously any sort of cheese bands if they're necessary. So basically, like we mentioned, Wings took out the two mech carriers on, for the off lane for DC in case uh, push comes in. Steven DC's Walker. turn to pick. Set up. Uh, they have good setup for the sun strike, so it's a, it's a very solid pick overall. Yeah, I mean, I'm a bit surprised that DC banned Timber and Wings banned Darkseer. Like I mean, we, we said Darkseer might be good for them and Timber is good for the other team. No, Ten Timber is like still remaining. good for... If you're going to run a Naga core, you don't want to deal yeah. with Timber. You, you'd rather do, deal with Invoker. They, they always want to keep their options open. They always want to, like, with the last...
they want to determine whether or not Reserve time. Yeah, but at the same time, going back to the Darkseer man, I felt like if DC's lineup have Darkseer and Naga and you're running a Naga core, the lanes are always going to be pushed. I mean, I get your point where the Oracle is going to like crush the Darkseer in the lane, but you just Iron Talon in jungle at the start if you can't go to the lane. And when it comes to mid game, it's going to be so annoying with the Iron Shell spam plus the Naga. That's a very good point. I mean, there. that's all putting a lot on the fact that it's going to be a Naga core, right? I mean, yeah, we but never they, know. they ban Timber. It's, it's, like yeah, yeah. it's like a good Ship. sign that Naga might uh, be a core. I mean, they also ban Haska, of course. Haska is like a really good ban against like Oracle in general, but that can also lead to like a Naga core because the game can't be like. You won't lose the game in like 20 minutes to a Huska. Yeah, and that's also uh, very true about the Huska. Like Naga, you want to prolong the game, and Huska is kind of those calls where you just run at the enemy when you have one or two like me me medium items, like Amla plus one item, and you try to end the game at that point when Naga is not ready to deal with you. Yeah. All right. Like that being said, DC, they've changed it up. They can change it up again. I mean, there's still Shadow Demon for them. Shadow Demon seems really good for the Mirana setup. Naga yeah. make more Wings illusions. Man on to Shadow pick. Demon comes out for DC. Super good. Very oh. stable pick. Yeah, yeah. For, for Wings right now, they might have to consider getting heroes that can deal with the illusions because it's kind of obvious that DC are going to go for this core Naga with the Shadow Demon here. Ten but, like, seconds what, remaining. There's not that many heroes that can redo really it. There's like a Lion, but there's way too many dudes Five for Lion to deal with remaining. it. Then we have like maybe like a Legion Commander offlane, but you don't really want to have that either. Like a support Zeus or something. I only suggest because it's Wings, who knows, right? If it right? was Wings, maybe, yeah. Dude, uh, I like it. I like support Zeus. I, 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 they didn't have Invoker, I would look back to something like Magnus, just as what we saw. Yeah, so, maybe, yeah. maybe go for Cleave, like I'm thinking. Yeah, uh, I mean, they're still saying DC's things. Like thinking, turn some, to something pick. is still there in the pool that we are missing that deals with Illusions. They usually run Sanking off then, right? Uh, no, there's, there was one game that I saw Isis, maybe two games that he played the Sanking like, support on a position for. Yeah, w would be pretty good too here, like they can go greedy if they want to. Ten but seconds usually remaining. DC with that draft, they go like aggressive try in And they like want to make it really hard for Five the enemy team to carry remaining. to like, farm up. And Void is a pretty, like he's not a bad safe laner, but he doesn't offer like any damage. Like, he doesn't time. pressure the off lane as much as like some someone else like yeah. Luna. Yeah. So like, I, I do expect the Naga Siren to be most likely like in, a, in, a, in an aggressive try lane. The Shadow Demon plus one. Mid? You, you don't think there's a chance that they might do it mid? No, it's very possible too. If you want to like avoid pressure. Yeah, but, but have they ever actually? Because I know we doesn't play the hero. Have they ever switched lanes where we joins the try lane and no. resolution is mid? No, no, not so far. I have not done that. So probably based on that reason alone, that might not happen. Yeah. yeah. You, you think this is gonna go something like Kunka again? One of their really favorite heroes. Kunka Shadow Demon. I mean, it's Naga very Siren. good here. It's good for catching out Sand King, especially yeah. the the boat buff is great. So you think that they will run like an aggro try lane with Naga with Kunka? Plus Shadow I mean, they did that in the past it's just to pressure the enemy offlane, and usually it works out really nicely, and then it just get like a huge lead. No! Oh. Oh. We have not Turn seen that baby boy for a long time. Not in a long time. They did it in the group game against OG. The game that they had Doom, they had a support morphling. It was all against the anti-mage. I mean, it's incredible against the poker and Void. But that's the offlane, right? Not position 4 support. Yeah, offlane. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Doom offlaner. They, they, I mean, the nice thing about this hero is that you pretty remaining. much just go in, you get your spell off, and the damage is pretty much done. You know, when one person's just out of the fight, and plus, he can Reserve go, time. he's very versatile, can go anywhere. Ten seconds you but you don't want to have him against Sanking, right? Like, like, if, if it's no. actually Sanking off, then you get completely destroyed. Just know, you, you have to DC's let Sanking deal with the try lane and not get a 1v1 matchup in this yeah. situation. Yeah. You definitely do not want that to happen. For yeah, that's why I think DC will just like try to avoid going aggressive try lane, no, no matter what they pick. Yeah, but if they go, say, defensive lanes, uh, do you think it's Ten better to have Mirana remaining. as a support or you just go for something else that, and just let Mirana go uh, go for the Five mid lane and your core position? No, I think whether it's better or not is not even important for DC because we is just like so confident Reserve and comfortable time. in Mirana right now, he yeah. just makes plays happen like every game. Like we spoke about it before, positions are like good and fine I mean, and all, but I, I guess uh, with that in mind, so Dazzle remaining. will probably be their best pick, right? Like Shadow Demon, Dazzle, and Naga, your lane is super strong. Pick. Dazzle is amazing with both their heroes and against the enemy heroes as well. Yeah, when they are trying to focus you in the bubble or the sanking power strike, you just have the grave to bail your teammate out. But that being said, it might still be a support Naga. It's very unlikely, but you know, DC, you never know until remaining. the last pick. Yeah, I, I, I guess so. And support Crazy. Naga does have it. So it is a support Naga again. Wings right. so turn to like, I, I don't like this for the single reason that if it's offline sanking, Doom is going to have a very, very hard time. 
Yeah, but he's always good at recovery, right? Like, you have the Vower, you can Iron Talon, and plus you're, you're pretty much, do, I think... Do you think it's worth it, though, for that? Yeah, and, and it's a good shanking free lane, though. He can still be, he can be the mech carrier for the team as well. That's another thing. Yeah, but, but do you want to give, like, the only real Five playmaker of Wings, like, uh, like, a good lane? Like, if that SK gets, like, a super fast blink, he can turn those fights around. I mean, it's going to be a trade-off for sure, but I remaining. think from DC, they can still make it work. Okay, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe they go defensive, try, uh, defensive lane as well, so I'm not sure. So, so there's going to be a Slada support sanking. Off lane Slada then. I mean, in that 1v1, I think you're slime. Now I like it way better. Yeah. Like, if they go aggro now, I actually think they're favored. Yeah, I'm going with DC. Going with DC too. Same. We'll see if DC are going to be able to move ahead 2-0 in this best of five, or if Wings are going to be able to match things up 1-1. One one. Let's send it over to the sidelines right now where we got our casters. It's going to be Toby1 and Merlini. And you may. DC versus Wings. First, these guys break the meta, then they make the meta, then they break it again just to give us a new thing, a new spectacle here on the main stage. The Doombringer pickup, now our digital chaos, Ben. Oh. That was signature hero. That's when uh, that's when I first saw when I was like, wow, this guy's really Ten good on a hero remaining. that wasn't super popular at the time. I think it's one of his best heroes. Similarly, on the side of Wings, Five we have the Invoker for Blink. Is what they will set. It's time to get into the game as game number two of this TI6 Grand Prepare Final for battle. is underway. Digital Chaos one game up over the Chinese wings as we will be bringing in an Iron Talon Sanking for the off lane and an Iron Talon Slaughter. They're doubling the talons on these two boys. It's going to be tough for them to stay in lane. Eh, yeah, double iron down. Yeah, though. they're actually right doing, off the bat. They're actually doing this. And DC have already placed them as a reward on the high grounds to make sure there aren't any iron talent shenanigans. <laughs> you wonder, like, do they come over and contest this as well? Uh, you can send an SD over. For now, like, you'd also be concerned about the SD rotations. What happens when he moves into mid lane? Setting Weehar up for some really good arrow combinations is an old classic combo. The SD Mirage together, you've even got the Ensnare from Misery, so multiple ways to enable to resolution as well, like with static link combos, other ways. It's it's like DC just have everything as far as combos go. The Wings have a superior team fight. Mm -hmm. I think Invoker is also one of the few heroes that that can actually stand up to the SD. Marana, you want to hear it with summons so that you can block the block the uh, arrow without any of your supports having to rotate over there, but more so concerned about their iron talon. Yeah, where do these yeah. guys where do these guys the go with that? Like, do you actually send one of them into the radiant jungle? The prize is mine. Like, is that the way you start this off? Like you're running double iron town, so you've you mean dire jungle? <laughs> uh sorry. Yeah, well, you could. <laughs> haven't haven't seen a radiant uh, support invade the dire jungle for farming in well, since Ricky's, like, Enigma started to try yeah, and I think dodge Enigma Ricky's. Do that. Yeah. Maybe Doom too, actually. Hey, you could always pick an Enigma. I don't think anyone here will be sad about that. So move will start off in the off lane. They're just safe lane. Try lane. Yeah, so n nothing unusual from them and the dual off lane from wings, so... But, you know, they're starting off wings. They see that three heroes are... But they expected the aggro. Look at the quick rotation. Two moves all the way over. Gets hit by the crush. I find the throwing strike. Shadow's on his way in. While the static link up on the top lane. They're battling there. And uh, Innocence makes a break for the tree line. It's Moo who's trying to escape on the bottom. He actually devoured a centaur. Got a three man stomp. And trying to reach back to his own T1 tower. What happened, however? How is Innocent still alive on this top lane? I do not know. He's had so much damage to all the misery. He hasn't even leveled an ability. Now he'll level up the ensnare, but what help is there? It's only that one range creep, and he actually... <laughs> he stops him from attacking by putting the face edict on him. Oh, they actually did not have enough damage and no vision inside those trudies to finish off a solo oracle after the faces would have and I wish we could see out. that move player again on the bottom lane. That was that was superb from him. Uh, but now though, the top lane, a little bit more difficult. Misery has leveled up in snare early on, so we can't harass out with Riptide. They just don't have enough damage to follow up. They need a lot of right clicks after the static link drains enough damage, but no oob, no way to really slow them down. So make the best of what you got. That's what the King can do. Mr. Ryan Talon, go wherever the hell he wants. He does have a level 1 virus strike, so it's also not great for him, but he has hit level 2. So the options are there. Faith decided to go a little bit deeper into the dire jungle. So, hey, you, you said it. Like, is this that time when you send a radiant hero into the dire jungle and said Faith is actually going to loop all the way around? It's like he's here to pull the camp, the, the creep wave down to get some experience that way. 
but he won't find it. He doesn't have an observer ward either, so there's no way to establish vision inside the DC jungle to fight to safely farm. He had to play a He had to use two stomps on the bottom lane, or two crushes on the bottom lane, and a TP. Uh, move might be okay. He's fine. He got a fortune set to slow him down. It's a level two time lock up for Shadow. No, no, no. But he'll no, need some no. serious RNG to get through that Doom Bringer. And the Doom is also an excellent pick versus the. Oh, they're going top lane. Ice Eyes locked up to start with. It's the Ensnare. They're still dealing a lot of damage. Now, also, Ice Eyes, the Sentry Ward, both of them being dropped at the same time. The drop just is up here, but the three man cross from Faith Beyond. Ice Eyes, one more attack. There it is. The Shadow Demon Poise for Regis. It's there. It's the Slot Bow 2. They can make it a two for a leader. Digital Chaos. They couldn't find the time to inflict the damage before, but this time they found it. Maybe a little bit of nerfs getting the wings. They missed the Burrow Strike on that Naga Siren would have definitely helped him out a little bit there. And the Ensnare will take down two. And Wings, they are not one to really give up on the off lane. And I'm a little surprised by that because they do have Iron Talons, but Iron Talons aren't terribly useful if you're sitting in the lane. You prefer to have Stout, Sows, Mangoes, Fairy Fires, Sticks, pretty much anything else aside from that. I guess the armor helps him a decent bit. However, Sucks up, lane. scouted out, moving over, he starts with a poison, still got a drop in the bubble, we hard hit that arrow, so he leaves over, but he can't hit the arrow, maybe just a start ball, fire from my side, dropping that SD low with a cold snap, it's we hard who finds the first kill, the tanking will get revenge, however, into the SD, we'll have to back away as Slada rotates over, the crush to we, the ice ice has attack. no interest in being involved in this. Still suffering on the mana front. They're not really getting too much value out of the Iron Talons that are under way too much stress from all these lanes under heavy fire from DC. I'll take your tribute. Easy bottle refresh for Wii, so he can go back up to full health, full mana. He does miss the bottom rune, however. Innocence made his way over for that. I wonder what build Shadow is going to go for. We see him get Lincoln's first a lot on the safe lane void, and I think it's. Definitely warranted here versus the Doom. At the same time, a lot of the faces boys we've been seeing on the main stage have just picked up lads early on as well. <laughs> Probably depends on when Wings feels like they can fight. We just need to create some more space for this slaughter. <laughs> like, yeah, he's got boots and iron talent, but the dream is getting that early blink dagger right now. DC don't want to give him any level of space as they force it into the tier one tower. Ice ice, only level one fire strike. With the crush, they do get the distance. Radiant's it's also only a level one static one, so Resolution not stealing that much damage. He's put more points into the AoE of that plasma field. But now DC, they don't have any creeps to tank, so they're just gonna sit here. They have a very deep observer ward too, and the wings to look like they do not want to let this tower fall. Usually this tower is not that important, but this game is a little bit attack. more important because of the Iron Town. They can't Radiant utilize that South Jungle. They need this large camp. They're trying to go for a revenge on mid. Uh, that SK is wrapped all the way around the back lines. We, he has the observed wall on his hillside. It's going to time out in eight seconds time, but it gave, gave enough information that he's able to escape the gank as time logs move. Fortune then again. Shadow needs another time off to make this work. He'll get it. He may die in the tower of innocence. No, the heal is there. And Shadow barely survives. Also with a salve up his sleeve can save innocence the mana. Whew. That was close. Nice face edict coming up. Why? He definitely needed that tick of a heal to, to save him up there. And Wings, finally that Observer Ward is down inside of DC, so Faith can safely jungle. So this early on, I haven't seen the Invoker really being tested that heavily. Like, obviously, he still got that one death early early on, but... Like, Wings, how's your time looking? Are you going to get your double Blink Daggers up when you're feeling comfortable? Dyer's middle tower is the under thing is, attack. with the Invoker, they don't actually need too many items. They can easily set up with a Burrow Strike during nighttime. I mean, he has move speed built too with the Wind Lace or Chronosphere from Faces Void and just farm out with the Invoker. You typically don't see them getting involved uh, too much. And it's not like you have a carry not gun off the team, so we they're, they're okay. The main no. concern is the Marana Axe. Uh, concern up on the top lane, Misery, ready to wrap around the rear, he's got illusions available, so no problem diving the tower, but Faith, Radiant's top he understands tower something is, is wrong, attack. but he can't see, now you'll see the illusions arrive, but they just want this top tower, support's on the way in the form of Innocence, heading to the top lane, Q1 tower, there's no fortification, so Faith, Actually, just running himself in. That still got disruption as well as and well, ensnares on cooldown for two more seconds. The TP hits face the point. Chrono is available. They're going to be careful in DC. The Chrono is catching Dark and draws a resolution. The Dark Strike will help them. They take one. They take two. They move to resolution. Time off in mud. The Crush still on cooldown. Actually, no matter.
Resolution will steal the damage. This is the basic point for finding the kill. Resolution, he's walking out of here. And he gets away under the cover of the Moonlight Shadow. At least Misery got the tower there. Expertly baited by the slaughter. He forced him to go on top of him and committed to that fight at mid lane. Boy, TV did. We, Misery. Oh, okay. Again, the Forge Crows are blocking the angle. Sorry, we were sitting right on top of Blink. Like he was itching to go for the kill, but just didn't have the support for a bottom lane. They go for the kill. Sunstrike move. Gonna dodge it. We barely the turns up the three points up the score. Dirt needs that life to survive. High side dropping down. It was the Infernal Blade, which is still still ticking him down to 38 HP. We'll make a break for the tree line and survive. As Moo just reminding us all why the Doombringer is difficult to kill in that off lane position. That was a really nice position by him though. He expected the Sun Strike and actually ran towards the Radiant side, expecting it to go into his walking path. Dyer's middle tower. You should be able to dodge it at this point in the game if you place it just right on top of him. But, you know, you're, it's normal to lead it a little bit. Wink really needed that Sunstrike kill. His mind is going to come out a little bit slowly. He's doing very well in terms of CS from Wii. The table have turned since last game. We're going to try and create some space up on top. There's no level 6 for Ice Ice. Yes. Fate does have the crush. They start with Virus Strike Destruction. They still need to get that crush for the sprint forward. They can move over the Shadow Demon. They don't have any disruption. It's an easy setup for the Sun Strike. For the damage still not there. The bar is right. Radiant's bottom is three. Catching Wee Hawk mid lead. Fuck that. Don't let him die. May not happen. Hiding inside the sands on the arrow from Wee Hawk pulls him out. But where is the mana? I doesn't have it. The last attack from Wee will do the job. Wow, that's static link. <laughs> if you just Dyer's one hit away, but he had no damage, all of it was sucked away by that Dyer's level 2 static link. And they were just unable to change their stuns, get a clean kill with the sun track. That's what they're aiming for at this stage in the game. And falling a little bit behind in terms of XP as they search for kills around the map. And this is before Misery hits level 6. Radiant's Crazy top thing tower to, is under thing attack. to think when uh, you don't have that Naga song to get you out safely. At level 6 you're talking about. Things can start to slow down a little too. DC how, holding the biggest gold advantage we've had the game so far, but it's not even a thousand. Shows you how close this is. Innocence currently being chased down by Misery. Fate's gonna rotate over. They start with a fortune then. This will hold in position. Sunstrike, no! cross, and there she goes. Very simple combo for Wings to execute. I gotta respect the Sunstrike. And now Moo probably calling for someone over. He is level six, ready to kill this faceless void. Looks like he will be going. Lincolns, see the start of the Perseverance. Perhaps Vanguard too, but I think the only shield is pretty clear attack. that he's going for Lincolns this game. And he can make Black weep by buying a Battle Fury on him. <laughs> <laughs> they make a lot of other people weep. There's that Hand of Midas timing, so 10-16 is how long it took for Blink to finish the shield. So this will now give him really good progression. He's already the top net worth on the field. And yeah, pretty decently far ahead of the Murano. We see a smoke gank move. Yeah, they have Doom up and available. What? I think they may reach is the Courier? Nah, uh, it's too far away. Instead, they're rotating over. They're searching for Invoker. They don't have to really search that far. He's still attacking the creep wave. That's a really hard gank to hit. Maybe if we had a better rune, but they're going to have to do it the hard way. Uh, Blink is up far enough. You just scorched her, tank up the tower. You can start with Disruption and catch him. Blink may be far enough away with a star fall. There's still four spirits available with the Disruption. Moo didn't find the target. The bar is down. He has to back up and cancel before he goes through. And that is not the way to go. Resolution brings in the deep. It's actually stealing the deeds away from the slaughter. That ice ice epi was almost done. Radiant the move timing right in the money. Fortified. The SD is down. Ice ice coming back in for more. Three stick charges. Not enough for that bar Dying strike just yet. Tower. He's going to go in. I'll get that six. There it is. They look for a bar strike up. Goes towards Wee. He gets a solo play. Ice ice that's getting shoot. Move. Let out the Hanukkah from inside of his chest and Vocal will get away. Resolution pass the field in three seconds. Does he know? Does Radiant's he know to go down? The pass the field. Here she comes. Too far Dyer's away. Bottom the heal is, is there from attack. Innocence. We will look for the arrow as well. Blink! He's stunned, but invisible. So Radiant's he will be okay. Has fallen. But an interesting Dyer's time for DZ to start that fight up before Fortune's End is available. Before that saving grace is up. Radiant's top yeah, they tower did not have is a under attack. Available for that, for that fight. And that shockwave coming out from Doom really caught Wings off guard combined with the Starstorm. So it brings the damage in. 
Well, Shadow not really involved. Still got Chronosphere up. Dyer's bottom tower has been they denied. Oh, they have that one Observer Ward, which is now down freshly inside the Radiant Jungle, which scouted out the movement of the SK. But DC is backing up a very long way. They need to get six on Naga first. They're taking it up on this troll camp really quickly. And now they can deal with a Chronosphere. Even, it's pretty good to interrupt the Sanky mold of it too. Uh, Weeha? Not certain exactly what his plan is here. Looking towards face, he hits uh, the Star Fall to begin. But no follow up with Leap Arrow. Has to be careful going against the Slaughter, having leaped down. Looks like Dyer had to use scan. I'm actually surprised they used scan there. They have pretty good wards inside uh, the Radiant side, and Faces Void was already showing on the bottom lane, but perhaps looking to protect their precious Marana. Oh, she still tries to farm up that axe. Now that she's level 6, smoke coming out. Here comes DC. Boom is off cooldown in 8 seconds time. Faces Void already time walking back towards the tier 1 tower. No mistakes to be made here by Shadow. He just has to make sure they don't like drop behind and place a berserk reward. That's the easiest way to lose your T1 tower is a smoke gank from behind. Well, the Naga illusions can look for them. Don't need the observer ward when you got the illusions up. And shadows out. Wings is heavily grouped up in the mid. Both ice, ice, ice as well as innocence together. They still need more time. Faces voice still really weak. It's just part of the man's Dyer's inventory. Invoker hasn't attack. had enough time for his minus to kick in. And it looks like they will just sack that tower and look. They're looking for Radiant Invoker. Structures Top lane. Fortified. There goes your disruption now. Catherine as well. Resolution starts up with the ultimate. Radiant with Pose 2 Blink. He's just trying to kill off the Sucker before he dies. The Sun Strike will be off target. Yes. So now as DC don't have an easy execution, it will come as a trade off. The Dyer's Tier 1 tower in middle lane taking considerable damage. Smart movement from DC. Radiant's bottom We expect their whole entire team to be down there for that wall. They're coming in. I thought he's gonna be through. He looks to come from behind. Right into the epicenter. The corner is there. It cancels the epicenter. It does catch up two DC players, however. But I thought now is a hasted stuff away. Fortune's in. Out from innocence. Can keep me that SK alive. You'll lose his own life in order to do such a thing. The misery is right behind him too. Fire strike available. No TP scroll. So he goes down the hill. Radiant's side. top tower. Hate is under is attack. Off. Arrow, wrong way. You went west when the arrow went east. They will give up chase. Yeah, not really coordinating too well in the same king. Ooh, we almost catching on ice ice. I think he's still looking for another one. There's, like, as far as vision goes, he doesn't have an observer ward watching the movement. Have to be one hell of a guess from Weehaw to hit it. Faith barely close to his wing dagger, but not quite yet. Oh, just a second. Yeah, that'll give time for the crush. Innocent is on his way. Has now actually started up the fortunes end. He's too far away from the Marana for that. And always have to be wary of that sun strength. But now we already see the early BOTs coming out from Razor. He is the most farmed hero in the game. Dragon Lance, very good at spacing herself, so you don't have to get caught in the Chronosphere by the face's void, or get jumped on by the Sand King, who's still a long way away from the Blink Dagger. I like his item choice. They all are. <laughs> Iron Talon's not paying off. This is how these guys break meta. Misery will have to fight, defend underneath the tier 1 town. Song of the Star and Upwings have to be a little bit more cautious, too. The laning Iron Talon? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's not a thing. They expect you to go to the jungle, though. This is that they do. Maybe that's it. It's, it's the next, next level, level mind game. High size, three. He's getting really close to that Aghanim set, but then Wing's gonna have a problem with the burst damage which DC can Radiant's provide. Radiant's bottom tower is that's under attack. They'll put their timing with maybe the first item up on Invoker and the Lincoln Sphere on the Pacers Void. Right now, they don't have to worry too much about the Roshan. No side of the Vlad's move, usually the builder of it, but this game up with a phase drum instead. He has converted attack. his Seder to an Alpha Wolf Aura. However, double smokes, DC, they smoked and went through the bottom river looking down to the bottom lane where Ice Ice is currently Allies farming up. Where's the double smoke coming out from Wings, they're gonna see Weeha actually in this. Thanks Let's for Central one. Very shot. quick Sorrow Sphere, the new the Sun Strike. Sucks a perfect place to cancel that one off and the Song of the Siren. They may realize that Sentry Ward was down, hence they went on him. And the Song of the Siren will allow them to back out. So no Chrono, no Song, but they keep looking for the fight. Ice size. the Invoker can die in the meantime. Shadow caught out by the Purge, as well as the Murano, a little bit further up. And with the Ensnare, the whole Shadow in position. He time walks away a little bit of the damage. He's a little bit long with the Fire Strike. Heavy Center from Ice Ice to the back line. He may find damage. He may have enough with the help of the Lethal Lane. The Murano, he's not out yet. The Bash, it's a damage from Slaughter. He'll find it. Swinging under the crush. A double kill to face.
Yeah. You still have TC going in deep looking for the other kills, but I side to box strike up away from resolutions only. Now the double cross. They don't want any more to do with this wings. That bling dagger. I'll put back on cooldown thanks to Plaster Field. They trigger the drum charge, but Wings back underneath their own tier two towers. Isis, what are you waiting for here? Raze is coming over. He'll hit him once. The blast appeal will be enough to get the kill. Oh, Harley, why is he hanging around? The fire strike was a full end as well, but he tried to save it. And Resolution Radiance middle gets a freebie. Is under attack. Yeah, just more and more kills going the way of Razor. He is becoming incredibly difficult to deal with. All these melee heroes trying to go on him, but he just stands his ground, not really under any threat as Blink constantly gets picked off in the side lanes. And he's going for a, a more of an early fighting build too. That Sun just flying on the courier to him at the moment. So it's not an early BKB he's looking for. It looks to be an SMY to go along with that Dragon Lance. Plus the maneuverability, the speed he gets from the BTs. Like he's already moving at 442. It's only going to get faster. A soldier's yeah, that fortune. That friend of the Marana. It's going to be very difficult to avoid for Void to hit Chronos in these upcoming fights. And this is even before the Doom has come out on onto him. And Void's still trying to finish up. Like he's not even thinking about a blink tag for the moment. He's still trying to get that last bit of money in to finish up the Lincoln Sphere. And I would like to see a four staff come out from one of Wings' heroes to see with a static link. We're but getting a lot of damage from that. They they both need to get money all night. Nice. The cross on the wing half the ball unit holds mid position. The attack, he leaves with this joint. High side held back thanks to the purge. Drops up, so, but it won't be enough to help him stay alive. Oracle purifying him with flames. And they'll take the T1 tower off the two kills. And I like how they don't really. Like, normally when you're Dyer's in this position, thinking, like, okay, I, I need a few more minutes for my Blink Dagger guy. Just let me fallen. stack up a camp or two. But no, they go the opposite route. They go for kills, they get the tower, they almost even get the Marana with that. They're not looking to lay off on the pressure here. You don't farm creeps, you farm here. That's the way Wings want to approach this. And I'll give him the top lane now. You have to be careful to get, not get caught up by a Moonlight Shadow over here. They don't have any Sentry Wards in the area, and no one's showing on the map, so they won't actually know if they Moonlight Shadow up. They're in position to do so. And with a TP arriving from Saksa. Comes in as that SD, already Zaya's Misery waiting in the trees, and that's attack. that Moonlight Shadow you're talking about. Moo will walk forward. Isai is the one to go on, but where is your damage out to face? Look at him go! They just have to let him go down. He was so close to having his Blink Dagger, but it's stripped away by DC with a kill. At 21.89, and that's what you get. You don't pay for sentries thinking that you can get away with it, but they missing off the map for a very, very long time. That should always be a warning sign that Moonlight's about to come out. I'm surprised he was still in underneath the town so far. With the Observe Ward up from Wings, they do have good vision. They realize both Saksa as well as Misery are on the back line. Space looking for the perfect link. Chronos here. It hits on the SD. The Crush, no song of the Siren out. They already get the kill on the SD. Misery holding that ultimate. The Resolution steals the damage away from the Fortune. That Resolution wants to keep fighting here. The Slaughter, there's the Time Block. Song of the Siren. Hold the fun, but wait for it. It will be released as it flies in. Who's the connection of the slider damage? Please, the fire strike up into the epicenter. DC, the damage, the man to bow out this moment. Ice Ice, no resolution. Hiding with the plasma field. Blink will finally arrive. 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 With the Deathling Blast pushing DC back, Paul Sam Boo in a little bit too deep, time loss as well, they bring down Boo. <laughs> and he is forced back almost up to the T1 towers. The Sunstrike looking for a target. A little too early, however, Misery and Weeha were still trying to run away from the lane. That was almost an excellent chrono, but at least he caught the higher priority target in the Shadow Team. Yes. Sucks has been on point with all the nice. Shadow. Arrow, Weeha. You still have Blink here to deal with. The Force Spirits are up, but Shadow time walks off the damage. Just barely. Whew. That HP from the Lincolns <laughs> coming to help him out right there. It's funny, they may even trigger the Lincolns for him. Still the Razor. That's such a huge problem. Sinking almost as his wing dagger, still 400 gold away as he perishes another time. I'll let the guy have the mid lane, then he can catch up. Yep. Mid, mid lane as well as the mid camps. But they have Vlad now on Doom, so now they can look towards Roshan Pit, maybe as the next Song of the Siren cools down. But he's only level 8 on the Naga Siren. They have to wait a whole 3 minutes in between songs. Is this going to be like game number one, two, where they like, play around song, play around faces, go chrono? Obviously, that cooldown, as you said, like there's a big, big difference between the two. There's more team by ultimates this game, so they don't have to rely on just one big one for either team. The Moonlight Shadow can be used to initiate a fight like this on top. The Doom can. 
go for solo picks uh, with his very long cooldown ultimate. And on the other side, we have Wings with the Epicenter, which they can easily combo with Slardar to get some easy kills. Wing is going to finally make use of this timing with a Blink Dagger on ISI as they smoke up. They are headed towards the pit. The question is, do they go? Nope, they arc up a little bit further north. They were hoping that DC would take it without Song, because then that's the perfect opportunity for it. Jump them and get a really good lead on this game. But DC are not that careless. Great hands use scan. They expect the smoke. Not in the right direction, but they still kind of know what's up. Well, they want to go in. They up. They're going to slip inside the pit, but the EPs are arriving. DC. The scan was on bottom lane looking for the Naga. Sorry, look how close they are. Pass the field from Resolution. Hits on Innocent. That's actually dropping him by half of his life. Well, they already start the heal. They get out of Roshan. And with the Naga Siren illusions going to the pit and the song coming off cooldown soon, there's no way that they can do this Rosh. I don't even think if they like had to straight there and didn't go to the Ancients, I still don't think it would have been enough time. Not enough physical damage yet. Face Boy with a defensive build and Invoker with just not many items at this point. And this game is still so close throughout this entire, like we've gone through 23 and a half minutes at the moment and no one's held advantage over a thousand really in this entire game, both gold and net worth, just showing you how close these teams are. It's all about the team fight. Can they combo Song with a static link before into like an arrow into a doom or is we gonna get the jump on them with a finally blink on the same king into an epicenter? Yeah, that epicenter always seems to come in just a little bit too late. You think it's gonna have a big burst, but it doesn't. It is a level two epi. So this is a difference which will be there for the wing team fight. It but depends on how they start off the fight. Like he can, he has a couple of ways of doing it. One combo with the Chrono, but you expect the Naga Siren to come out if you don't get the Naga Siren. If the Naga Siren's in there, then yeah, jump the Epi. But if it doesn't come out, maybe you wait until after the Chrono Spirit, wait until they're about to jump after the song, and then go in. So it, I, I don't know how Isis is going to play. He's been in the fight a lot early, but that's because he doesn't have his Blink Dagger. Well, with it now, he does Blink straight over the top of the Dire Observer Ward. So DC realized that Wings are doing an incursion. Towards the top lane. Oh, there's the Ags on Invoker. I saw his item just a few minutes ago. Like, he's on top of network, but he didn't look like he had that many items. But yeah, with a completed Ag, they had the damage. He only bought it a minute ago. Dyer's so, top tower well, is under attack. Lane. DC Lada. with a smoke on top. Uh, can they find their target? Wings are already bailing out. They bring both Innocence and Faith Beyond down the bottom lane, looking Dyer's for resolution. The Observer Ward is denied. giving them the information they want. As Digital Chaos, they see Ice Ice and their own Ops Ward. That's a long way to go. They don't have that easy jump in like you get from an SK. The SD and Naga have to close the distance the old fashioned way. I wonder what they're going to get on the Doombringer. Because he's. They ideally want him to initiate the fight. Like, starting with the song is very risky because then you leave yourself exposed to the Chronosphere. And Razor, like, he's strong. But once he gets BKB, maybe he can run in. So Razor and or Doom is going to be your main uh, initiator. Unless you get a straight arrow. So. A lot of different ways, but maybe going something on the Doom like Blink or Shadow Blade can open up a lot of options for Wings. Maybe not able to gank the Faces Void, but everyone else can be an option. You want to be able to deal with the Invoker as he's split pushing. There's a 4 star you're asking for. It's over on the Slaughter. So we've got both Blink and 4 star a highly maneuverable team from Wings. While the Blink deck, I guess, completed on Weeha. So that Blink into double Starfall and then leap away to safety. It would be problematic for Wings if they get hit by that before the fight begins. And Wings actually buying up a new item of their own. They instantly TP the mid lane. So once again, after the fresh Blink Dagger on Wings, this time it's on Shadow, they smoke up and they look for an opening on DC. The Observer wants to tell them everything they need to know. Fire strike down. Saksa get popped by the Invoker Zone Strike. And then the Blink double cross. The Chrono now catch out to Misery. The song comes out. The beautiful tones. At least beautiful for DC, the arrow will hit perfectly on Shadow, but Ice Eyes, they're trying to keep up. Where's that four star forward? They don't have it, they look down into the What a perfect time for a slow game. I think if you trade Song for Kurt, it's actually pretty good for Wings because now they can do Rose without fear of reprisal from the DC side. You can't really go in there with Razor and a Doom. Maybe if Corona hits the arrow, but that's a big maybe. And Rojan is dropping fast. They let it go. Musa is up on top. Fine farming up. We will push out the mid so at least Wings. They can't just rotate the down to the bottom lane and take out the tier 2 tower. Radiance they must come back and defend their top and mid lane. Oh god, look at Blink's items now. He is so Regeneration. Far. It's the Shadow Blade pickup from him. That was his item of choice. Yeah, this is 
the best way to deal with that poker. But now that he has an Aegis, it's like, ah, uh, you might have a lot of wasted time with your Shadow Blade. You can't gank the face's Void with that. Just kite him out, like let the, vo let the Invoker sit in the back lines Ye while you kill off everybody else, if that's possible. Yeah, I think that's how it's gonna go. Ideally, you maybe even kill the Slaughter at the start, but then again, you have the Oracle, able to just save him when he gets to. It's difficult for them. I think Murana has to be in there to do a lot of damage and pressure the Oracle to use his cooldowns very early on into the fight. A lot of this rests on we. Well, this man is used to pressure. He's had a terrific tournament so far. They need more tomes on the Naga Siren too. They're like, she is really far behind on level. She's doing well on items, but you really need level 2 song. Like, they're forced to play so defensively because of this. And the windows for wings to engage is just really huge. Now, Naga Siren Ultimate is like way longer cooldown off Faces Void. Faces Void can find a fight perhaps in the next minute where DC can't respond. Say hello to a fresh BKB over on Resolution. Avoid the Colonel, or maybe he can be a big influence in the fights. He still has to be a little bit careful. Amplify damage with four spears beating on him and Sunstrike. All can take the him down. I don't too careful as really is in his vocabulary. <laughs> He's running straight down into the lane. He'll actually plaza the field, revealing the Slaughter. The TPing out, the crush will happen. Slaughter has a TP scroll of his own. They have no stun on resolution. But that was one man. DC were a mile behind him. That's also a BKB reveal, however. Normally you want to fade it. It's like, okay, Sand King's gonna go in with a Burrow Epicenter, and then you turn around with the BKB. That's the ideal fight for them. But now that it's Wings, face coming up. They don't realize that Shadow Blade's on the Doom, but now, okay, yeah, they do. They they caught a glimpse of him as he backed up. Wings also scanned a little bit further up. They're trying to see if DC was gonna move through the river entrance. But they already have a gem on Slardar. Yeah, I mean, they're... But they're not Shadows worried. Take us. At Innocence cost, Moonlight Shadow forward. As he said though, with that gem, this may be a big trap. Dyer's In the tree lines, Ice Ice attack. is close. Do they get a glimpse? The Slaughter's not far enough forward. Now that they see resolution, he reveals the fact that Moonlight Shadow was used. The mid lane just makes this too obvious. Look at mid lane, look at top lane. The creeps are just beating on the tower. This is just a clear sign that DC are away and up to something funky. Oh, their wings, they remain patient. They don't find any pick as DC bailed out, but DC were also very, very, very deep. As far as wings look into their jungle. And Marana's falling pretty far behind the net worth, at least relative to the Invoker, the Minus, the Aegis. All these have added up to him being a huge leader in terms of net worth. And I'd be much more scared of a farmed Invoker than a farmed Razor, because Razor can only do so much. He also had to commit to a BKB. Which is Regeneration! Now, how does Growth Resolution, in fact, build from here? Do you try and go for this? Like, do you continue for a very heavy mid game build? I like the Shiva's build. Uh, gives you a lot of armor versus Amplify, and you need that AoE presence in a team fight, so you can run in there. Your biggest fear as, like, a BKB hero is running there, and your whole team dies around you because you can't pressure them enough, you can't do enough damage, you can't soak up enough spells, and I think the Shiva's is kind of the perfect medium for that. You can, you're also self sufficient with the Static Link, you can. Link heroes without relying on a disruption or a uh, demonic purge or a snare. And also just limits a lot of the damage output, especially from summons like Invoker. Faces Voidu doesn't have that much attack speed, although as I say that, he has a hybrid stun. <laughs> oh, you have the plate mail up, so it's fine. Where do they go? Down the bottom lane? Everyone's grouping up again, but in the trees, ice ice. Stays there with an Observe Ward in the lane, he can make really good decisions. Yeah, he can. As far as not dying. They can set up for an Epi Blink into Sun Strike, but it has to be on a weaker hero. Nagas aren't actually has a gem. They will scout it out. They might kill him right now. Oh, uh, well, there goes your OBS. I ice think. Ice. I thought he was going to go on him right there. That would have been the perfect kill for them. Let's see him in the trees. Yeah, Ice Ice no, no longer has any vision. He has to get out of there. Link's almost finished up his Lincoln Sphere. He's got all, almost all of it. Now, sitting inside of his stash. Actually, no, he's finished it. It's, it's sitting on the Radiant Fury. Because he has to deal with Doombringer. Doombringer. You'll usually see them go for the Sage Creep, or sorry, the Purge Creep, to Radiant deal with the Lincoln Sphere. But at the same time, oh, be really careful. That gem is there from Faith. They understand the Doombringer's in the neighborhood. As the Observe Ward on the hillside gave wings the, the good tower vision. Has fallen. They're split pushing the sides, though. And Aegis will expire, DC have to be happy about that one. But they're still looking to front the side of the map. Will they be able to take down their Observer Ward but before they have to defend the lanes? I don't know, this Observer Ward still sees them. Yep, and here they come. Link up, Slaughter, double cross, Amplify up in the 
double bar card from my side. The song of the siren. It cancels the epicenter. Boo, misery, we. It is bail, bail, Allies bail. The TP away to safety. <laughs> what save coming off of that? Sinking. Yeah, the epicenter. He has to initiate. That's a problem right now. The slaughter has to. He went first, and they weren't really well coordinating that. They wanted to coordinate their stuns, but I have to applaud Misery with his positioning too. As a Naga Siren, especially a support one, you never want to get caught out. And with all these blink initiations and the four stabs and all these yules and whatnot, it's extremely difficult to keep a low death count. This game, he's already had four. Not too troublesome, but now they have Chronosphere. They want yep. to take a with Chronosphere. There is no Song of the Slayer. Shadow Demon now has to be the one to stay outside of the fight. Arrow almost connects with Shadow. Oh, that fire strike forward, Ice Eyes. We are actually committing has the double star fall trying to hit the SK. Not possible, and Wings just make the right decision. They're going for all the remaining out of towers. They take the mid, now they rotate top. They still have the advantage for another 115 seconds. That's until Song is back off cooldown. Dyer's top tower is under attack. DC. They're trying not to get out farmed at this point, especially with the Invoker getting out of control. But wins are only 2,000 gold ahead, although that will fallen. spike up after these towers. But, but the next Roshan has to be very troublesome. Not is still not a lot. Eyes, eyes. Cops a five second hour, but he's got almost every member of Wings around him. But there is no follow up to this. Because right now, there's only one Observer War left on the map with the Battle of the Gems. DC only have eyes in the Radiant Jungle as both teams circle around Rose. Invisibility! The wings are assigned to stretch ahead. As far as the Golden Experience goes, we're either over or at 4,000 in both the Golden Experience. So wings slowly, bit by bit, they're getting a small advantage in this game. Even if their team fight and, and the way the heroes are moving, it they get a huge advantage. They have better split push threat. Despite the Razor having the early BOTs, the Invoker is just much better at pushing out the lanes because he has he can solo kill anyone who's out alone. Whereas the Razor, you can force them to run away, but you can't actually kill them. So DC are having their lanes shoved in at the moment. Not what you want if you eye the Roshan. So does, does Wings keep farming up until they're at like an immortal position against DC? Or do they need to focus on finding kills outside the base? Because I'm thinking like, how does Wings take the first lane of ranks? How do, how do they work towards the subject? It's a long process. Firstly, they have to push out the lane so that DC split up. Oh, ideally, you want to get the gem first. Once you limit the gem, then you can get up several rewards. And then you take Chronospheres when the Naga Siren's not there. You can get Epi Blinks when he, when the Naga isn't there. You can get Slorar to crush them with a Sunstrike when the Naga's not there. But it all depends on them having vision of DC and DC. They do not want to split up as five and give Wings that opportunity. Once you do those, you can take down Roach and slowly make the seed. But you know, the Dota's... Dota's not a book, Dota's not a script, you can't just follow things like that. And you gotta keep the Observer Ward up. So we see one Observer Ward up placed really... It's such a smart <laughs> one. I, yeah, I can see that one. It's, it's in the trees at the very eastern part of the Dire Jungle. And because Misery is sending illusions everywhere, because you have the gem on them, so they get true side out from all the illusions, they've never found this Observer Ward. So Wings, they can see where DC are moving. Yeah, that, those are the wards that when you can, especially in the gem on gem ward, it's extremely difficult to, go, to keep them up. It's gonna stay up for a very long time. Roshan looks like it's gonna be a two and a half minute respawn. Time is well, the money. AC is done in Regeneration. Time. So not too far before DC can move down. Dyer's bottom so they have some nice auras to work with here, DC. At the same time, Ice Ice is trying to finish up his Aghanim Scepter. He's rapidly approaching it. This is his primary choice of item after getting the Blink and the Yule Scepter. Fire as you scan, Ice Ice looks like he may run into it. No! Oh, he TPs. He's going top lane. He wants the money, remember? Like, yep. if, he, if he's gonna reach this Aghanim Scepter, he needs to get this top lane farm. Yeah, he's 100 the, gold away now. But TP out super risky there. What if Roche were up or right after that Sun Strike? Then they could easily take it. If we try and go in there, then Naga Siren sleeps. They, I don't know if they know that. That's nice TP'd up there, but it's very likely considering he doesn't have a TP in his inventory. Well, with this smoke up, it's going to expire. Maybe Wings can scout out with the help. Ooh. Well, they don't need four spears when you have a scan. It will land red. Perfectly done. I think they're in vision. Well, that's the beauty of having the Observe Ward over on the edge of the Dire Jungle. They understand the DC are not in their jungle at the moment. And this allows Wings to use Shadow as bait. Ice Ice. With a fresh axe, hoping to put it to use in a fresh off. 
the rain on the Invoker, but that means very few buybacks on the side of Wings. They're throwing all their network on this impending Roche fight. And DC are just hoping for an opening, but while this curve's on, and while they group up, they didn't achieve anything. Wings was getting the farm they wanted. Oh, Weed's gonna show in mid. He could get jumped out right here if they're not careful. Well, they headed down for Roshan instead. The Naga illusions are on their way. It's smoke covered Wings moving up to the Ancients. Weeha comes in the middle of a fire strike up. They find a resolution spot as well. Can they kill up Weeha? No, the lead pass. He'll get the stop for Oracle. He revives it with a flame once again. And it's resolution. Bashed up the fight into the two different parts. I thought to go in the back of the chronosphere. Sunstrike's coming in. The damage isn't enough. Disruption. Sucks Keep his core alive as Resolution runs away, but now with the time dilation, Tornado and caught it! Thanks to the clutch from Faith Beyond, Resolution moves out of the bottle, back to the back from Shatter, who finds the secondary one in the Naga. Sucksa, he needs to get out, the damage is horrible! So try and oh. oh. He was drawn to the line, but you do not want to watch the line! Oh man, the crowd goes wild as wins. Take down four. That was, man, I really like their positioning. They didn't go for the Piranha in mid, because that was the only hero showing you it's gonna go up there. But they go in, they find the back line, and the sleep comes out, but Razor and Dyer's the rest of his brethren fall. Boo, the sole survivor. X Wing close in on the T3. Now I can't wait for Weatherman Push to, to tear that one apart. You saw DC have the high ground, but unlike Dyer's episode 3, it is Wings who take the advantage and they will take Dyer's the melee racks away from DC. No disable, he'll get out safely. <laughs> uh, Slardar has been playing really well. Like, this entire game, he's just been finding these multiple men crushes. That was despite like a really terrible landing phase by the little Sunstrike. It's uh, all about waiting the damage and before DC can respond. They don't have Song of the Siren. Misery's moving over. That's on cooldown for another half a minute. And they actually find move. Into the the mech is not enough. The arrow will connect on Shadow. Sweetheart, he jumps in. He needs double damage right now, but it's not there. Trying to get the wings on Roshan. DC are exploding at this point, and wings just played so carefully around that Roshan respawn. The way that the timing of their smoke, the items coming out at the perfect time in DC, they were just not prepared. They needed to be they needed to be grouped up as five behind their cores, but they were just far too spread out. Unexpected wings from it's under attack. to come around from behind. Oh, the play oh. resolution cost and the find the sun strike. They need more damage. The fire strike. dreams as a guaranteed four games here in the grand final but digital chaos there was a lot of smiles going into the end of the draft of